Thank you for joining us for this week's Lecture and Planning Series presentation. Our speaker for today is Inez Sanchez de Madariaga, Professor of Urban Planning and Director of the UNESCO Chair on Gender at Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. My name is Carolyn Swope, and I'm a PhD student here in Columbia's Urban Planning Program, and I'll be moderating the session. I'll just start with a few brief technical and logistical announcements and then turn to address introducing our speaker. During the talk, I'd like to remind audiences on Zoom to please mute their microphones. The chat box should be used only for discussion regarding the session. If you have technical questions that apply only to you, please message me or my hosts, Ranjani or Helena, privately. We encourage all of you to type questions into the chat box during the presentation. And after the presentation, we will have time for Q&A. We'll start that around 2 or 2.15 uh, so that we have time for everyone's questions. I'll be coordinating the Q&A with attention to diversity and inclusion. So if you have already had a chance to ask a question, please allow others to do so before asking another one. To ask questions, participants can use the raise your hand feature and we will call on you to unmute and ask your question directly. Or uh, you may also type your questions in the chat box and I can read them out. So with that, I'm delighted to introduce today's speaker. Ines Sanchez de Madariaga, Professor of Urban Planning and UNESCO Chair on Gender in Science, Technology and Innovation, is a leading international expert on gender in transportation, urban planning, architecture, and STEM, with extensive experience in policy practice and research. She has led numerous successful international collaborations as chair of the advisory group on gender issues to the executive director of UN Habitat, um, chair of the International Cost Network Gender Science, Technology, and Environment, and co-director of the EU-US Gendered Innovations Project. She has played a key role in introducing gender dimensions in Spanish and European urban planning, working with national, regional, and local governments, as well as with private developers to implement legislation, programs, plans, and projects that integrate gender issues into planning and transportation. She has held public office as Deputy Director General for Architecture, Advisor to the Mineral, Minister of Housing, Advisor to the Minister of Science, Director of the Women and Science Unit at the Cabinet of the Secretary of State for Research. A former Fulbright grantee, she has been visiting scholar at UCLA, the Bauhaus Weimar, London School of Economics, and Columbia University. She is author of over 100 articles and of two reference books on gender in planning and transportation. In 2008, she coined the term mobility of care, which is being used by policymakers and researchers around the world. And in 2021, she received the Mathilde Usle Prize in recognition for her professional trajectory in promoting women and gender equality in transportation, mobility, and urban planning, awarded by the Spanish Ministry of Transportation and Urban Affairs. Her talk today is entitled Gender and Planning from Research to Implementation. So Professor Sanchez de Madariaga, if you're ready, I will pass things over to you now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And thank you so much for organizing this uh, this lecture. I'm very happy to be back at Columbia online. <laughs> uh, and nice to see you there at Avery Hall. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I will proceed with uh, sharing my screen. Um, please do let me know if uh, if it's uh, if you can see it. Yes, we can see it. It's not full screen, it. but we can, um, um, we can. I'm trying to put it full screen. Is it full screen then? Yes, exactly. OK, OK. Well, thank you very much. So I'm starting by presenting uh, what is the UNESCO chair that I'm directing. It, it's one of the, the UNESCO has a program uh, that it is called the UNESCO Unit Twin Chairs. Uh, and they are chairs that they, uh, that they are establishing around the world on topics of interest to UNESCO. There are like a dozen of those that address gender issues. And the one I'm director of is the only one that is um, uh, established in a technological university and uh, addresses technological and technical fields such as uh, architecture and planning and transportation. So it was established in 2016 and we address all fields related to the urban environment, to, to, to city building uh, and, uh, and some uh, related uh, science and technology aspects uh, as they uh, are relevant to, to women's careers and, and, and women in the profession. And the kind of activities that we do are the, those that are the, the, the typical of university. Uh, research, dissemination, advocacy and engagement, consultancy and technical assistance, education and training, of course, 
strategic advice, and we also do some things with, uh, with professional women. So, um, you know that gender equality, uh, we have this international framework that uh, put together gender equality with a sustainable urban development. Uh, one of those is the Agenda 2030, in which uh, uh, gender equality is objective uh, 91, uh, UN International Agenda for Sustainable Development, and uh, cities are object objective 11. So uh, there is this interrelation uh, and, and also gender cross cuts many of the other objectives of the Agenda 2030. And then we have the new urban agenda that was adopted by, by the UN in 2016 in Quito, in which uh, there is an extensive reference to women and gender in cities. So gender mainstreaming is uh, like, um, like the tool uh, uh, to uh, support a sustainable urban development uh, within this uh, general framework established by the United Nations. Um, I have been a, an active participant in this process leading up to integrating gender into the UN Habitat programs uh, uh, and uh, for the last, since the last year I'm uh, uh, the chair of the advisory group on gender issues to the executive director of UN Habitat and I have been um, a member of the, of, the, of the expert group that has uh, uh, that worked on the new urban agenda, uh, working on its gender and women's aspects, and uh, on the expert group that drafted the, quad, the first and the second quadriennial report of the new urban agenda. This second quadriennial report is going to be uh, uh, announced uh, and published uh, next month. Uh, it will be uh, uh, presented by the Secretary General of the, of the UN, Antonio Gutierrez, uh, uh, in the uh, high-level meeting uh, of uh, April 28th. Uh, so I have made a thorough review. I, I was asked by UN Habitat to do this thorough review of the quadriennial report from a gender point of view. Uh, so how do we, what are we referring when we talk about women and gender in cities and in planning? Uh, because uh, we have this body of knowledge that has the, has uh, that comes from gender studies and from women's studies that have developed quite a number of concepts and approaches and so on coming from different fields of, of research and also from from uh, from urban studies uh, uh, of which uh, a very Im Im important uh, pioneer was uh, Dolores Hayden from Yale University whose books from the early 1980s are really the first, and I still think they are the, are the main references for us on, on what is relevant when we look at cities and planning from the point of view of women and gender. But all this research, how do we translate this, uh, uh, this, this knowledge, this research into actual uh, policies, into actual plans, into actual policies, uh, in, in a field that has, uh, of course, it has social aspects, but it has also a lot of, uh, it's a very technical aspect, how you build cities, and, uh, and, it's, uh, and it's also a field uh, that in many countries is still very mas masculine, particularly everything related to transportation more than in other, more than in other parts of, uh, particularly everything that is more physical planning than what is social planning. So how do we translate, uh, let me see, I can't advance my, my PowerPoint, let me see, why, it has got stuck, oh, here. So um, how do we translate this? So uh, let me first uh, um, do a, a very uh, in brief introduction to what the key topics or the key concepts that come from gender studies and that are applicable or relevant to cities and to transportation planning. The first one is the idea of gender stereotypes and social norms. What is expected of individuals and groups in terms of gender? What are the stereotypes and social norms that anticipate behaviors uh, or ways of being in the world? Uh, th this is uh, very much related to gender roles, uh, to the sexual divisions of labor, by which uh, historically it's women who have taken care of, of, of uh, care tasks, of, of everything that is related to the reproduction of life. And this implies a double workload, because most women uh, in, in most countries today uh, work as well as uh, take care of, every, uh, of, of these tasks related to, to, to reproduction and care. And, and in this, the, the key concept is the concept of care, for, uh, uh, as it relates to planning, because 
Care is defined as paid and mostly unpaid work performed by adult individuals on behalf of children, the old, the sick, and the overall functioning of the household. Um, so uh, other relevant concepts uh, for, for cities and planning are gender violence and universal design. Uh, it's important to note that um, uh, it's, uh, it's this uh, double workload uh, that it's mostly women who do because statistics tell us that it's women who do most of the care work um, and that the gender gap in care work is not reducing significantly. It, it is reducing slightly, but it's still there. Uh, and the, and uh, the statistics regarding time in, in, in around the world shows uh, show us this very different uh, time use uh, that translate into the use of the city. Because if we make like a simplified uh, a scheme of uh, of uh, what these care tasks imply in the city, uh, the the person who doesn't combine care tasks with employment uh, has a simpler use of the city from the home to to to, to work maybe some some sport some leisure but the person who works and also has family responsibilities uh, or who takes most of this workload has to go to different parts of the city to take care of that and the and the data show us that this is mostly women who do it so, um, uh, I don't know why this is not running well. The Okay, uh, so we have this, uh, uh, when we look at planning from the point of view of, of gender, and we look at what are the foundations of, more, of modern, modern planning that is embedded into planning techniques, uh, we have to go back to the to the early 20th century with the Athens charters and the and the functional division of the city in residential production leisure areas and the transport system that links and separates at the same time these spaces and the underlying assumptions that are behind this is the personal experience of those persons who live in the city without care responsibility so pay employment is the main focus Housing is seen mostly as a place for leisure and not for its care implication. And transportation is the means to link the spaces where all these functions take place. Uh, so these um, uh, unquestioned ideas that most often are unconscious on gender roles and sexual divisions of labor are implicit in urban planning practices. Uh, so gender roles and stereotypes, uh, for instance, uh, in the construction of the modern suburb, suburb the modern American suburb is what uh, Dolores Hayden documented so beautifully in her books of the early of the early 80s. Uh, yeah, and she sh he shows in her books how the experiences and needs of the persons who assume care responsibilities are not made explicit and hence are, do not receive the same attention nor priority in policy and plans nor resource allocation or investment decisions as the needs and realities of the person who uh, mostly uses the city for uh, uh, without taking this responsibility for care tasks. Uh, so if we apply this and we look at transportation, there is a lot of uh, research now in public tra in transportation on women in transportation, uh, a lot of it in the US uh, and but in many countries around the world today, over 50, if I would say 40 years now of research uh, uh, that was pioneered by the Federal Housing Administration with a, uh, with a series of conferences of women's issues in transportation since the late 70s. Uh, so the data show us these consistent differences between men and women as regards transportation. Uh, men travel longer distances, uh, uh, women use more different kinds of transportation modes, uh, men have more access to private cars, uh, women travel for more different purposes. Uh, uh, the time is the, the one uh, variable in which uh, there doesn't seem to be significant differences. Uh, women travel for more different trips. You, uh, uh, the special patterns of trips uh, is very different, while men is mostly a, a commuting uh, long distance trip. Uh, uh, the the passive, the special patterns. But um, I think that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt. But I think the slides are not advancing. Um, I wonder if maybe you could close out of them and reopen them. Okay, so they are not running. They're not running now. Okay, so let me see how. Um, 
I, yeah, I think if you reshare it, perhaps. Let me uh, open it again and see what. Can you see it now? You can see it, yes. Um, Let me see. Yeah. If it goes, does it go well now? Yes, they're moving. Okay, okay, sorry. Had you seen this slide before or not? Uh, no. No. And this? No. Oh, so it was stuck. Uh, this was the last one we saw. This was the last one. Okay, so, well, <laughs> you should have seen this and, and this one uh, with these illustrations that come from Dolores Hayden's book, the ones on the right side. Uh, so, uh, I was saying, I think I, I was saying that uh, I, I was here, I, I was talking about uh, transportation. So now there's a, a sign appearing, now the participants can, can see my presentation. I don't know why, I don't know what that sign, okay, if you can see it. So you, you, you should be seeing a slide uh, uh, with some graphs on transportation, you're seeing it. Hello? Yes, um, we are seeing it, correct. Okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, there are th these consistent differences in transportation use uh, in that we find uh, in research across the world, both in, develop, in the developed and in the developing world. Uh, I was talking about the spatial patterns of trips. You see a, like a scheme in, the, in this part of, of the slide. Uh, so that the spatial pattern of trips done by women is more of a polygonal uh, shape uh, uh, because uh, women uh, go for these many different uh, purposes of travel, uh, sometimes in using chain, doing chain trips, um, uh, and and it's uh, within a closer, uh, uh, smaller uh, geographical area than men uh, than men's trips. Uh, women do more chain trips. This means that in one single trip, several segments of the trips are done for different purposes. And, and sometimes using different transportation modes. Uh, so that's a very specific way of moving that is related to care tasks because women do these complex chain trips uh, because they have to do different things. For instance, uh, going to buy something on the way to getting the kids to school or bringing the kids to school on their way to, to work, things like that. Uh, so also the age of voluntary cessation of driving is much earlier for women than for men. Uh, the issue of safety, uh, the kind of injuries uh, is different because of body sizes and, and weight uh, and the way that safety design uh, in, in safety devices are designed in cars because they are mostly designed using models of, ma of male bodies than of women's bodies. So this implies that um, uh, the impact in women's bodies is greater than in, in when there's an accident. And also in terms of, of being uh, um, of suffering an accident uh, by when walking on the road, for instance, there's more more women that are victims of that kind of accidents as well. And then the issues of ergonomy because of different body sizes and, and strength and so on. So this very consistent uh, 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 transportation differences uh, by gender uh, are uh, very very relevant, and we have found them around the world. Um, uh, around 12 years ago. <clears throat> In a research project that I uh, did for the Spanish Ministry of Transportation, I, I developed this concept that uh, you mentioned in your presentation, the, the concept of mobility of care. This was the result, uh, they asked me to do a gender analysis of the Spanish transportation uh, statistics. And at the end, when I finished the gender analysis, I had found uh, quite a number of gender omissions, gender biases, and so on. It came to my mind to see it was like this, like a bulb that lit in my head, and I and I I, I thought this uh, within all these many conventional categories for travel, which is like shopping, leisure, strolling, sporting visits, and even the black box of other, many of these trips are not done for personal purposes. They they are done really because they are trips that that women mostly do for the purpose of, of taking care of other people or for the upkeep of the home. So I had this idea that if you give a name to those trips, you would be able to quantify them and make visible and see really what's the mobility related to care tasks and to quantify it. 
so I define this concept as trips made by adults for the care of others and the upkeep of the home, uh, because existing services do not allow to quantify it within the overall mobility because they have gender biases and omissions. Uh, for instance, trips of less than one kilometer on foot are not measured by most travel service because they are not relevant for transportation infrastructure. Uh, and those are trips done mostly by women, very often as part of change trips. So that's an example of omissions. Um, so I had this hypothesis that in between maybe, of, I, I, this was like just a, a hypothesis, a theoretical presupposition that in between one third and two thirds of trips, normally counted at shopping, visits, strolling, other, could be considered or should be considered as care trips, and that 100% of scorching trips should be considered as care trips. And I made this counting based on, a, on an existing of the main Spanish transportation survey of what this would amount to in, in, in quantitative terms. Uh, and so th this, uh, this was the result of this theoretical exercise. Um, that uh, the number of care trips would be quite significant uh, uh, and, uh, and relatively close to employment trips. So after that, I, I had a student uh, who did her PhD dissertation on this, and we developed a specific transport uh, survey to measure it because, of course, the normal service do not allow to quantify those trips, you need to do specific questions, specific, more detailed, and, and you need to, to, to train the interviewer so that there is no biases in the way questions are, 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 are made and so on. So the result of, of this, uh, uh, this research was that for women, uh, for the population between 30 and 45 years in the region of Madrid, uh, the number of care trips uh, is very close to the number of employment related trips. And this is the result, as I say, of, of a specifically designed survey. And then when you look at this by sex, uh, disaggregated by sex, you see that while the, there is certainly a gender gap in employment trips, uh, this gender gap is much bigger in uh, trips related to care. Uh, and, and it's m m the, the number, the percentage of women who do those trips is much, much, much higher in proportion than the difference in, in employment trips. So this is highly relevant because it, it demonstrates first how big the, the number, of, how high the big of the number of, of uh, care trips are, and then that they are mostly performed by women. So after this, uh, I did a. a, a, a uh, some I applied these concepts in other research projects in other parts of the world, and particularly for the for UN Habitat, I did this study in Nairobi. The Matatu system is the small buses, which is the only system of public transportation. It's private, but but it's public <laughs> uh, that exists in Nairobi. Uh, and I found that women do one additional trip for care purposes. That it is not shorter than trips to the workplace that this trip is done before or after going to work, that they travel longer distances, that the special scope of women's travel is not covered by one bus line requiring them to transfer, that many women do not travel because of concerns of sexual assault, uh, and that men are also concerned about safety but not of a sexual nature. So this is an example, and, and this concept of, uh, of care, uh, we have applied it in, in other in some uh, mobility plans in in several cities in in uh, in Spain. So uh, let me now uh, with this. I wanted to show you this concept as as an illustration of how care uh, the these concepts that that come from gender studies uh, can be relevant to planning and transportation. And now let me show you where we are now in 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 terms of implementation uh, and. Uh, uh, with a general overview of the Spanish of the Spanish situation, so we are a little bit more advanced than other European countries in integrating gender into planning. Uh, although the situation is a bit heterogeneous, there are significant differences among regions. This is mostly related to legislation, as I will show, because legis planning legislation in Spain is a regional competence, and different regions have enacted quite advanced legislation. Uh, uh, requirements regarding gender in, in their in their land use uh, legislation, and some others have not yet. Uh, so, 
uh, and, and also this uh, the different stage of implementation is also very related to to political aspects uh, uh, and also from from the from um, the, the um, some pressure that um, that uh, the women in the academy and also as the grassroots have been um, uh, putting on on their on their on on the I would say the the, the, the political and the and the technical uh, uh, re, um, um, staff in 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 government. So um, this is like a, a a list of the legislation in Spain that. Uh, affect both planning and have gender gender um, uh, uh, requirements uh, in Spain. You see, it's quite a big number of of, uh, of laws. Um, uh, the first one from 2002 in Andalusia. The last one uh, just last year. It's it, it's with respect to housing in the Basque government. Uh, the type of the topics, the planning topics that are covered by these different experiences cover from transportation to housing to urban regeneration, safety in public space, uh, pa the quality of public space, urban facilities, uh, specific urban facilities addressing women's needs, um, uh, um, uh, train stations, uh, economic development, uh, rural areas and also um, uh, tertiary uh, office office space areas uh, <clears throat> and uh, the kind of uh, planning experiences and instruments and tools used cover also from regional planning to urban city planning scale to municipal ordinances to uh, mobility plans to urban uh, urban projects infrastructure development urban agendas heritage catalogs, uh, urban regeneration projects, and uh, projects in uh, uh, um, transportation infrastructures and train stations. Um, I will show you now some of these, uh, some of these experiences, uh, some of the examples, and then I will put a focus on, on two of them. Uh, just to show you first the, the wide range of, of, of this, uh, some illustrations of, of this, and then I will uh, go more in depth into 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 just two two of them. Uh, so, um, first thing relates to uh, the participation of women in planning processes. Um, there is um, a very interesting methodology that was originally developed in Canada in the 1980s, 1970s, sorry, called exploratory walks or uh, uh, or gender audits. Uh, this is a methodology that is done uh, with uh, local women uh, uh, supported by a group of technical experts, planning experts, uh, and um, it consists of doing uh, uh, exploration, a walk uh, during the day, during the night of a, of a neighborhood with a previous selection of, of what's the, the, the specific parkour that will be done to, to identify the locations uh, where there are uh, issues of safety or of quality of public space and transportation, and then to, to identify what, what are the reasons behind this uh, perception of insecurity or unsafety and to uh, propose uh, um, ways to uh, address uh, to address it. Uh, so uh, this is uh, done by UN Women and by UN Habitat in many uh, uh, countries around the world. In Spain, we have been doing this in many different cities. And the kind of results that, that come out from these uh, exercises are very interesting because you can also uh, do segmentations of uh, the, the profiles of the women uh, who are more relevant to specific areas. For instance, you can uh, do, you can take into account intersectional uh, aspects such as age or ethnicity or um, or uh, physical ability, uh, and and uh, or, or, and identify what are the the specific needs or ways of 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 coping with with those issues by different uh, groups of women. So that's that's one one thing. Uh, here you can see some of the train stations in which uh, we have collaborated with the Spanish train uh, and railway uh, 
um, operator, uh, which is it's like the equivalent to Amtrak uh, there in the US. And uh, they own and operate uh, train stations and, and, and the railways. And they have integrated, we have advised them on how to integrate some gender requirements in their in their public procurement projects when they um, when they um, prepare the briefings for the renewal of the stations and the and the railways and uh, uh, they have integrated now them systematically in all their 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 projects and uh, is, this is starting to become like an ongoing normal uh, mainstream, uh, as we say, uh, uh, criteria in the in the renovation of train stations uh, around the country. Um, uh, regarding housing, uh, we have uh, advised the vast government in their housing legislation uh, uh, with a number of uh, standards related to, to, to gender for housing design. Um, that that have to do with the minimum size of uh, the, the main things that have been integrated as housing standards that came out of uh, recommendations of analyzing the typical the, the existing regulations from a point of view relate to to in, increasing uh, minimum size uh, of, um, of of rooms uh, uh, of kitchens uh, of uh, and of other of other standards and and uh, uh, the spatial relationship between different spaces of the of the um, of the of, of the home um, and and issues of safety and so on and we have also advised uh, on the procurement of house of pilot projects of innovative pilot projects uh, uh, housing projects uh, in the region of, of Valencia. Uh, and we have uh, uh, also uh, produced for them a manual with recommendations of, on how to design housing, uh, introducing gender criteria. Of course, these recommendations uh, go uh, are more extensive than what is integrated into, into the legislation, because when you do legislation, you have to be standards, you have, uh, you, you, you put a standards Few, few things can become standards and you have to be very sure of what can become a standard. But you can do recommendations in much wider ways uh, and, and address many more issues uh, when, you, uh, when you recommend um, and, uh, in that kind, in that kind of, of, of policy as, as, a, as the guidelines are, are, are. And this is what we did for the, uh, Valenci the, General, the Generalitat Valenciana. So uh, when it comes to planning uh, at the um, urban level, there is an instrument that is uh, in the Spanish legislation, which are gender impact statements. And, and several regions in Spain have this as a requirement. So it's a legal requirement for all plans to have a gender impact statement. And uh, this is one of the things I will show you more in, in more detail, the gender impact statement for the for a very big redevelopment uh, project in the north of, of Madrid. Uh, and, and then uh, several regeneration projects that include the, the renewal of, of big areas uh, around uh, transportation nodes uh, in which all, all we have uh, worked into the design as well as, as in the gender impact statement such as uh, the same project Madrid Nuevo Norte and the one in Via Irún. Irún is a, a, a city in the border between Spain and France, which is a very, very big transportation node. Uh, and the, the whole area around the train station is a new urban development project, and we have been working on it, introducing, introducing gender criteria. And also in this big square in the center of Valencia, which is a very important urban, very complex, node in the center of the city with part of the his historical city uh, that had been historically uh, unsolved with lots of, of urban uh, issues and we are also uh, working on, on uh, as part of the team introducing the gender aspects into the design of the new of the new uh, square of Brujas. The regional plan for the uh, for uh, the Basque country uh, that's the other example I would like to show in more detail. Uh, and then uh, an, another example that I'm, I think it's quite interesting uh, is the region of Extremadura, 
uh, the land use law, they asked us to produce a technical annex on gender with recommend extensive recommendations on gender at all scales, since the, region since the regional uh, planning scale to the urban to the local scale. And, uh, and this is a technical annex uh, to, the, to the law that is also coupled by a, a manual handbook that uh, uh, illustrates and, and explains how to apply uh, those technical uh, recommendations. Uh, we are at this moment working with the Inter-American Development Bank uh, in producing a gender action plan for uh, one area that gets flooded every year uh, and it's clo close to the historical city and, and it's going to be, uh, it, this is a big uh, project for the renewal of this area and we are working in producing the gender action plan for this, for this renewal project. So uh, uh, those are that those are examples of, of, the, of the range of, of actions and, and, and uh, projects and scales of implementation that we have been developing. And we also work on, as I said at the beginning, on women in the profession. And we have for the Spanish Professional Association of Architects, this is like the American Institute of Architects, we have uh, produced a study on the situation of women in Spanish architecture. And at this uh, moment, we are finalizing a gender equality plan for the architectural profession in Spain. Um, I, and, uh, and of course, I have uh, another very important aspect of, of working on women in architecture is the, 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 the idea of, of, the, of the canon, of what, is the, what has been historically the contribution of women to architecture, how this historical contribution of architecture is recognized, has been studied, has been integrated into, into uh, educational curricula and so on. So uh, the study of uh, of uh, uh, the the I did this this research project on the biography of the first Spanish uh, uh, woman architect uh, that has just also been uh, published. Uh, uh, this was published ten years ago, but we have produced a, a, an updated um, bilingual edition uh, that has just come out a couple of weeks ago. So manuals are a very important part of of this work. Uh, as, as I have mentioned, uh, uh, we, this is the, the manual that we did on housing. Uh, this is the manual that is attached to the technical annex to the land use uh, legislation in Extremadura. Uh, this was one book that I wrote uh, in the early 2000s, so, uh, 20 years ago already, which was the first book in Spain, in Span being published in Spanish on gender in planning. Uh, and this is a toolkit that is linked to the project uh, that I will show you now, that is the gender impact analysis of these very, very big redevelopment projects in the north of Madrid. We produced a toolkit, uh, both in English and, and in Spanish, uh, that explains easily uh, what, what was done in the project and, and, how, to, and uh, how to address these issues in, in, such, in redevelopment projects of this, uh, of this type. Uh, so, uh, I will show you one example of these manuals, uh, the one uh, uh, that is attached to the land use legislation in, in Extremadura, just to give you a, a hint of what uh, uh, these uh, books address. So, first, why gender is relevant, what are some basic elements that you need to take into account when you look at planning from a gender point of view, what are the principles to be applied, and then what are the recommendations, and then examples of best practice. Now we have uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't have as many examples, but now there are quite a, a significant number of examples uh, in different countries. Uh, and so we, we produced this selection of 20, I think there are 22 examples of best practices that illustrate different aspects of planning, different scales, different tools, different instruments, and they are presented um, uh, not in very detail, but but sufficiently to understand uh, how to how, how gender is relevant and what has been done in that specific case, and, and then some references for people to 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 look for more information. Um, these are a couple of, of uh, pages of the book. Uh, this is the book on housing. Uh, it has a bit the same structure. Uh, why gender is relevant for housing design, what are recommendations for design, and then a number of, of best practices. These ones are really analyzed in a lot of detail. 
Here it's only seven examples, and we analyzed them in, in quite a bit of detail. So they are, these are long, long uh, uh, descriptions of these uh, experiences. Uh, here you see also a couple of pages of, of this book with one of the projects analyzed, which is in, in Vienna, the Interwiesen project. Um, and, and now let me just move on to uh, the two examples I wanted to show you. The first one is the regional plan of the Basque Country, and I will give you a, a brief overview of what we did. Um, the Basque Country has three big cities and then many different uh, smaller sized towns and quite a bit uh, significant uh, and important rural uh, landscape. Uh, so the key aspects that we considered when producing the gender uh, as, uh, the gender um, elements that were introduced in the regional plan uh, were these four aspects. First, gender roles and paid care work, sexual divisions of labor and their impact in the use of the city by men and women, the gender perceptions of safety in urban space and transportation and their impact on women's access to employment and services, the feminization of poverty and intersections of gender with other factors, including female household heads, age, ethnicity, immigration, disability, and the participation of women in decision-making, technical staff, participatory processes, gender expertise and administrative structures of gender mainstreaming policy. So um, the, the idea was uh, looking at an urban model of uh, what would be an urbanism of care so that the concept of care and its implications for planning and transportation would be at the core and that the actions and measures proposed are centered on this idea of care. Um, the, the plan is organized in, in eight thematic domains. Uh, so the, our recommendation was to select, not to try to cover everything because that would, even if there are gender elements probably in all, uh, we recommended that it would be better to focus on the more relevant areas and to have some more a, a number of of uh, actions and, and lines of uh, of programs uh, of bigger impact and not try to cover more thinly everything. So I recommended to select four uh, areas. Uh, these four that you see here, urban environment and territorial planning, sustainable mobility, governance and rural environment. And uh, as an example, uh, I have listed here the lines of actions for the domain urban environment and territorial planning. So we recommended compulsory indications for land reserves for care facilities within municipal land use plans and zoning regulations, plans for care facilities for the elderly, toddlers and children, pilot projects through open calls and public competitions, financial incentives for gender-related actions, including in programs, plans, and projects by local governments, guidelines, manuals, and briefings for good practice for gender mainstreaming comprehensive plans and regenerations projects, specific measures to be integrated in housing plans, identification of locations considered as unsafe through participatory processes and actions for improving safety, and guidelines, briefings, and manuals for public space design and public facilities to be developed by both the regional and the municipal governments. So each of these lines of action has explanations, etc. Uh, but those are the main areas in which uh, we recommended uh, to act in this particular area. Uh, so as, as wider recommendations for gender mainstreaming uh, in planning, uh, as I said, we, we recommended to cover sufficient substantive domains uh, that regulatory changes are needed for continuity in time to produce some structural change, uh, that small scale should be combined with large scale actions. Sometimes people think that gender is just the local neighborhood near the home, and it is not, because the only way to have the the, the environment around the home to work from a gender perspective is if you also have the regional, the urban and the regional scales. It's like a, like Russian dolls, one inside the other. They are uh, uh, integrated scales. You, you, you need to, to work at, at the whole uh, uh, level of, 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 of scales. Uh, you also need to look at intersectionality. You need to combine women targeted actions and also mainstreaming measures and sufficient elements with transformative capacity. It's better to have less uh, than trying to, to cover more, more thinly. 
uh, that institutional capacity building is very important and to create and use expert knowledge. So those were uh, some of the key um, uh, lessons learned from this uh, first experience of the regional plan in the Basque Country, which was drafted in 2016. Uh, so now let me move to, to the other project. And this is the, the, just the, the last project, the second and last project I wanted to, to show you. Uh, uh, this is a very big redevelopment area in the north of the city around the, the, this big transportation node of Chamartin. It, it involves a new CBD, several new uh, subway stations, uh, um, a, a whole new uh, big uh, train station that will be the, the node of high-speed train in Spain and the connection to the airport and several subway uh, connections and bus node and so it's an in, a big intermodal uh, transport node um, and 10 so uh, 10 over 10,000 housing units uh, with at least 20 percent of social housing um, these are like the big numbers for you to understand how big this project is it's one of the it's like the size approximately the size of canary wharf, wharf or of la defense in paris mm. Uh, this is the land use uh, plan of, of, this, uh, of this project. It involves covering uh, some part of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, rail, the, rail, the railways. Uh, some part of the existing railways will be covered. Um, and uh, what we did uh, for this project uh, was uh, a number of actions we did uh, ad hoc training for the technical office and for all the directors uh, that were of, of the different teams that were working in the project the design was by uh, by uh, rogers and the main um, engineering consultant was of arup so we were working with them in the same offices um uh, we did uh, we worked uh, during the whole process of design along with with the with the with the with the this um, this uh, technical uh, um, and, and design teams that were uh, producing the design. Uh, then we worked with the en engagement department uh, uh, on areas of regarding social inclusion uh, uh, that were targeting the na neighboring areas because some of the neighboring areas of the project are quite rather low income areas. And, uh, and so they wanted to work with the women in those areas, and we did quite several exploratory walks with the women. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, and then we produced the gender impact assessment uh, for the project. Uh, the topics that the gender impact assessment, which is what I'm going to, to focus, uh, covered were transportation, all modes and scales, public scale, space at all scales, uh, residential areas and housing, the CBD, uh, the facilities, uh, the historical heritage, because there are a number, uh, there are a couple of, of historical buildings to be preserved in the area, and we uh, the the general impact assessment has two parts: one at the master plan level that covers structural issues, borders, interaction with the surrounding areas, and then at urban design level for each of the four sub areas that were defined for this. Uh, project within the, the Madrid uh, Urban Development Plan. Uh, so you see a little bit uh, what the, uh, some of the, I will show you some of the, of the drawings that we produced and of the recommendations. I'm going to be, uh, to go a bit quickly because time is running out, but just for you to have a, some idea of what this uh, work involved. So we analyzed mobility, uh, the intermodal uh, network, uh, the private car deterrent measures, the support to active mobility. We know that from a gender perspective, active mobility uh, is a very is one of the important things to look at. Uh, and uh, 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 we worked on alternative pedestrian routes, safety and security, high quality urban space, care support. The quality of urban space, uh, green areas, proportion distribution and hierarchy, the urban fabric, uh, a street section, clear and hierarchical pattern, size of blocks. Um, regarding uh, safety, lighting is, a, is, a, is an important aspect, and uh, this was included within the environmental strategy and focusing on vulnerable uh, points, 
uh, and that's, that was also integrated with the urban design regulations. Um, then we worked on the everyday ur urban facilities, their location, the mix of uses, the accessibility by foot and by public transportation, and taking into account of all kinds of accessibility and autonomy of different people of ages and so on. Um, and that uh, to ensure that uh, they are responsive to the most dependent citizens. Uh, regarding housing, um, uh, we looked at uh, well, the, the sizes, the, the distances to transportation, um, the mix of use around the home within the building block, within the neighborhood, the areas with a priority to pedestrian mobility, um, uh, and then uh, the urban regulations at this scale of, of the planning process uh, include that in the following stage of planning, which is the urban planning project, it's an, a next step to be produced after the project we were working on, that a gender responsive report is mandatory to justify if the project meets basic requirements re related to gender equality and care supporting. So this, um, uh, this we use this device uh, in several parts of, of, the, of the plan so that whatever could not be defined at this stage of planning uh, 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 should be defined at the following by requiring that this report is mandatory. Um, uh, also, uh, we introduce minimum lighting uh, in urban space according to gender criteria that come from the literature on the subject. Uh, and, and the same thing with the, with the building uh, projects regulation, uh, this, uh, response, this uh, report mandatory, and then some requirements about building uh, buildings uh, with about storage uh, to support care mobility and some criteria regarding also safety, safety uh, uh, design that takes into account safety criteria. Um, uh, for instance, uh, regarding fences, the mix of uses, the lower floors, uh, the common areas uh, uh, in the buildings, and so on. Uh, so, uh, and, and we did same similar analysis for the commercial and office and office use. And let me just finish because uh, the time is nearing close. We we produced this toolkit uh, summarizing all these findings and recommendations. And this gives you also a flavor of what this document is like. And, and I'm just going to finish because I, I think my time is running out and just wanted to share you uh, some of the European projects that we have been working in these past years that address uh, many of these address gender and planning, but most of them address, address uh, uh, gender quality in uh, in research and academic institutions and structural change to promote gender institution uh, gender equality in in, uh, in institutions um, and uh, uh, these are some of the products of these projects uh, different manuals and research uh, papers and and uh, this report is by the European Commission on how to promote gender equality in universities. Uh, we did it within, with an expert group that I chaired in 2000, a few years ago already. Uh, and these are some of our publications. I, and uh, I will just uh, like to, to mention these, these two books uh, that came, uh, um, the first cities book that was published by Ashgate, uh, uh, fresher, fresher cities, uh, uh, the impact of gender planning in Europe and in gender in cities that came out in 2020 during the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic by Routledge, uh, which has a wider geographical scope and it has also experiences and research from other parts of the world. So I, I'm going to finish here. Thank you so much for your attention and uh, I will stop sharing this so that you can, that I, can listen to your comments or questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Sanchez de Madariaga for your uh, very informative talk. So at this stage, um, I would like to open up the sessions for questions. Um, and again, um, to ask questions, participants on, on Zoom are encouraged to either use the raise your hand feature and I will call on you to unmute and ask your question directly. Or you may also type your questions into the chat box um, and I will read them out. 
So I think the first question that we had um, was from Thea, who asked how we can access some of the publications that, that you mentioned. Uh, well, some of these are uh, PDF uh, free online, and I can give you, I can send you, Caroline, the, the links so that you can share them with people. Uh, uh, the, the manuals are all online. Then the, the publications, the books should be in your library. Uh, and if not, you can ask them the, to, to get them. The, the Ashgate and the, and the Routledge book, for instance, or uh, so, some of these, the ones that I show in my last uh, slide, they should be in, in your library. The TPR, the Town Planning Review should be most probably there. Uh, so yeah, I, I, will, I will send you links. <laughs> Great, yes, I can send and follow up to the attendees um, any resources that, that are easily shared. Um, so next I see Ranjani has their hand up. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your talk, Professor. Um, I guess one of my questions while I was watching um, your talk was that um, I wonder what are the histories of feminism uh, locally in, uh, let's say, Madrid or, or in Spain, more particularly that have made it uh, maybe reduce political opposition to an extent to have this level of like, you know, gen gender oriented policies at every level. Um, maybe if you could talk a little bit about that and, you know, sort of um, connecting that to challenges in other places that maybe do not have those kind of histories or, you know, why it's so difficult to have such, um, I don't know, intense sort of gender development discussions everywhere. Yes. Well, in Spain, we have had uh, like a combination of three 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 elements uh, and i guess this is the same everywhere uh, on the one hand uh, the feminist movement uh, through women's association and the feminist women pressuring and asking for change uh, then women in academia who have provided the theoretical frameworks and the concepts and the arguments and, and, and the discourses and then we have uh, the femocrats women in politics and women in in uh, in governments as technical staff. Uh, so this combination of these three uh, uh, have produced this result. How has this happened in particular in such a way that uh, we have produced in these past few years a lot of advances? I would say that uh, one important uh, uh, aspect is that the, in Spain, the Socialist Party, who was in government in the early two years 2000 and early 80s, and for most of the 90s, so for many years, uh, uh, has always had a lot of feminist women as part of the of the of, of the socialist party. So uh, feminist socialist women have been very uh, important in producing many of these changes uh, by, uh, for instance, all the legislative changes. Because you saw the list of of legis pieces of legislation, and when things get into legislation, sooner or later, legislation has to be implemented. At the beginning, it is not. <laughs> But then a, a judge comes and says, this has not been implemented and you have to. So everybody starts looking at this. This is what has happened with the gender impact statements. They were in legislation since the year 2003. Nobody th uh, had thought about them, even if it was also in the legislation, uh, that plans had to be gender uh, responsive and nobody cared. Uh, but then in the year 2016, a judge said, this plan has to be cancelled because it doesn't have a gender impact statement. So this was a very big point of uh, inflection when a judge said uh, this plan is cancelled. So this is a big thing for a city when your plan <laughs> is declared uh, uh, is, uh, because you don't have a legal uh, um, framework for managing the, the the urban changes uh, so everybody started to think oh what is this thing about gender we have to do it what is this about so that was the big point that's when we did this work for the Basque government when we did we started doing these gender impact statements that i show you and when when gender became a, a topic in the profession and it was because the legislation that had been in place for over 10 years a judge started to have it applied and so people who hadn't cared at all about this. Uh, and, and so I think that um, we, we have had this combination of, of facts. Uh, first, a strong feminist movement that produced uh, feminist leaders in politics that changed the legislation. 
And, and then uh, also, I think it was also very important, the work that we have done from the academia, because all this has happened because we have been producing all this research since the, since the year 2000, slightly before the year 2000. And we had produced this, no, this body of knowledge that was there, and then we are translating it into something that can, can be um, translated into practical, actual implementation, but, but, but the academic work was also there. So I would say th this, uh, and, and then of course there's the role of individuals. For instance, we had a, at some point a president uh, uh, of the a prime minister who was a feminist, uh, 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 and he uh, for the first time had a, a cabinet with half women and and uh, many of this legislation was uh, of, of this gender legislation was enacted at that time so it also individual persons can at certain points be quite influential thank you very much um, so the next question is from Sango, uh, who says, I was just writing a question along a similar line. What kind of oppositions did you face, if any, as you tried to integrate gender element to these cities agencies, which probably had their own established planning practice? How did you overcome them? Um, so to the extent that uh, you feel there are, are additional points on, on that question. Yes, well, we, I, I've been working on this for over 20 years, and I was really the pioneer in Spain. Of course, there had been some people who had started before me, uh, but they, they did uh, quite piecemeal research. But the first uh, research group that was created in a Spanish university, and also the first one in, in Europe that has done consistent work only on gender and planning, uh, is the one that I created 20 years ago. Uh, so I faced a lot of resistance and opposition in the university when I started working on this. They, they just, at the beginning, they thought I was mad, <laughs> that uh, my colleagues were looking at me as if, as if I was crazy. What is this? Uh, what? Uh, and so there was a lot of, uh, of opposition. Uh, and then when I was in government, because I've been in government twice, um, in the Ministry of Housing and in the Ministry of Science, uh, doing some of this very first legislation, the legislation that in 2007 at the national level uh, that for the first time talked about gender in planning. I, I did the drafting of these uh, of the articles of the national land use regarding equality and of the national uh, equality law regarding uh, uh, planning and housing. So I did this crossing in, in the two pieces of legislation, introducing the, 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 other, the other topic. And, and this uh, experience in government, when I was Deputy Director for Architecture and Advisor to the Minister of Housing, this was really, I mean, the, the opposition was huge. It was enormous, enormous. That was when this Prime Minister, who was a feminist man, was there. Uh, and so even having the support of the prime minister and having the support of the minister, the opposition by everyone else was enormous. And it was very, very difficult time. And all these things were very difficult to, to, to do. We, I, I, we did a number of, of things to support women and, and gender in planning at that time, in addition to the legislation. And, uh, and it was really uh, quite confrontative, I must say. Uh, but in these past years, this has changed a lot since uh, uh, the, the courts started saying you have to do it. And also 15 years have passed. So <laughs> that's quite a bit of time for minds to, to evolve and change and, and public opinion. A very important point uh, of, uh, of transition was in, also in, in the year 2016, in public opinion regarding all these issues that was related to the Me Too movement. Uh, we had a very big case of rape in Spain that was at the same time of the, of the uh, Weinstein case in the US. Uh, and so this was a, there was public outrage. Uh, and, and, and since that time, uh, feminism has become like the normal thing for anyone, for most people to be. So it's, just, it's a bit like the opposite. So now it's, it's the, the public opinion has changed a lot. Uh, so now there are quite a few, and also because it's in legislation, there are many governments who want, who really want to do things and they want to do them seriously, not just as tokens, but they want to do uh, uh, things um, 
to, to change uh, the, the material um, uh, the, the, the material circumstances of, of women's lives through planning and architecture. Thank you very much. Um, other questions from the audience? Um, I'll ask a question if, if uh, there aren't any further questions from non-hosts. Um, I was curious um, to hear more about intersectionality. I know you mentioned that that's an important principle to be integrated into these efforts. Um, and it um, often comes up in, in my research on gentrification where gender comes in often in one way and other dimensions of identity in another way. So i um, curious if you could speak more to places where you've, you've seen conflicts and tensions there, places where you've seen opportunities to address needs of different groups simultaneously, um, just yeah, would love would love to hear more. Yes, well, uh, I think this is highly context specific. For instance, in the U.S., uh, race is a key thing for intersectionality, which in Spain is not. Uh, so uh, the 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 context is very different compared to what we are doing in practice and what you and and how this could be translated into an American context. You would need in the U.S. You, uh, you would absolutely need to to intersect gender and race. Absolutely, uh, and geography, because also your cities are much more segregated than ours, and 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 also the spatial patterns of cities uh, with the uh, low density suburbs are very different from our cities, which are much more dense, uh, and there's not such a big difference between the central city and the suburbs as in the U.S. So, uh, I would say that. Um, uh, this makes for a big difference on how to approach the issue of intersectionality comparing the US to Spain. Uh, in Spain, uh, relevant, uh, the most relevant uh, aspect I would say is age, uh, age uh, for, uh, because we have a very high per, uh, elderly population, and we have one of the highest uh, life expectancies in the world, and most of these are women. Uh, and most of those who care of them are women, and they are uh, not many of them are cared in nursing homes, but many are cared by family members. So this is a big thing. Uh, and, and then, of course, children. We have one of the lowest birth rates in the world because it's very difficult to to work and take care of kids. So for us, I would say that uh, age is one key thing. Um, and uh, the way we have been. Uh, uh, it, it, this all depends on when it comes to practical and implementation things. Uh, you need to see at, at what is relevant uh, for the actual planning instrument and scale and topic that you're working with, uh, because it's not it's very different to work at, 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 uh, at a regional plan than working at a train station or working with a housing housing project. You have to look at different things and see how these inter interactions and and combination, because the, the issue of looking at intersectionality is the combination of of race and sex or of age and what is the the the, the effect of this combination on one person or one group of persons when it comes, for instance, to housing. One of the housing projects that we analyzed in, in our book uh, that I, you, I, I show you the, the image of the Indervis, and this is a project by Francisca Um, a uh, Viennese architect, and it's called intergenerational housing. And it's a combination in one single building of housing for elderly, for families, and for young with different services and looking at the specific needs of these different uh, uh, household uh, and age and gender needs as relates as they relate to housing. So I would say that this is a way to approach the issue of, of, of intersectionality. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Well, I see we are right up on our time. Um, so on behalf of GSAP and the urban planning and program in particular, um, I'd like to thank you again uh, for your great presentation today. We really appreciate you taking the time to share your work with us. Thank you also to those who attended. Make sure to join us next Tuesday at the same time for a presentation by Lewis Bettencourt of the University of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.